Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I've rearranged things on my shelf a little bit to make room for these two empty trays. Um, really, if you think about it, the arrangement of my shelf is oldest, younger stuff down here, and then younger stuff flows around on another shelf behind me. So, um, a little bit younger than the oldest of my systems that are already in the process of migration over there are the yellow buckets which would normally not fit easily into a lot of the spaces where I like to keep trays and where I like to keep things in order sequentially so even though shortly after the creation of these systems came the yellow buckets the yellow buckets have always been stored off on the side but today I think the yellow buckets contents are going to get transferred into these two empty containers here and in preparation for that I've already got the yellow buckets out here on my bench and something that we've been trying to do in these systems is to see the moisture level drop because first we started by removing the plastic coverings over the material in these systems to allow for some evaporation but we kept paper coverings paper coverings were then removed and then even with the um, systems exposed to the air we experienced very little drying so the idea that we had was something I put into service a day or two after our last check-in which was to set up this fan over here to blow air down into the systems. So our last check-in with these systems 12 days ago was followed by me coming back 10 days ago to set that fan up and it was perched about three or four feet from the bins blowing directly down into them and I'm curious to see how much drying it has Caused. I mean, I can see a difference in the appearance of the material, but whether it's um, super damp, just a little tiny bit below the surface, I don't know, but today we're going to find out. And chances are, the fan probably didn't make much of a difference, so I'm going to be moving this stuff over into the trays. That's where I think we're going to see the best drying. So, I'm going to put a glove on and we're going to get to work. Let's get started. Now, I do feel like even before we get started, I should maintain an open mind because I have not checked this material, and who knows, perhaps it's drying exactly as we'd like it to, and maybe we can just continue as is and not occupy a bunch of space on my shelf with the big trays being used to store this material. So, we'll, um, we'll get in here and we'll make the decision on what to do next. Maybe we don't even go to the trays, maybe we just continue with the fan, but before we get started, let me just share the specs for these systems with you. 288 days in service now, 12 days since the last check-in, as I mentioned earlier, and 10 days of being blown on by the fan. And the reason um, system number one over here received more feedings was because system number two was put onto this set it and forget it um, program for seven weeks, and that's why it, it fell behind because during that forget it stage it received no feedings while this system here did continue to get fed and man oh man this stuff is very dry <laughs> I was almost expecting it to just have the dry appearance to it and perhaps not be dry but it is definitely dry and you know we'll, we'll blend all that dry material on the surface in which will definitely result in the surrounding materials um, sharing their moisture with this dry stuff absorbing some of the seemingly excess moisture I'm really starting to wonder if what we got to do is take a really close look here and perhaps we're not going to want to bother with the with the bus boxes I don't know still that moisture that's causing stickiness to have material clumped to my gloves so I'm already in, uh, imagining um possibly I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Let's rearrange the camera a little bit, bring it in closer here so we can see what we're doing. Let's just do a little bit more exploration in bin number one, just so we could size up what we want our next steps to be. I like that idea. <laughs> Coffee's what I've got on the menu today to give them their 27th and 23rd feedings. And I guess the whole concept of stay or go stay in the yellow buckets or go to the bus boxes is the decision we need to make now I mean it was pretty interesting to see how dry the material had become from the fan blowing on it for the past 10 days 
And that was, um, that was not really uninterrupted either, you know, because a lot of times I would come down here to film a video and it seemed like the fan was creating a little bit too much background white noise. And I would shut it off and then I would forget to leave. I mean, I would forget to turn it back on later on. It would just um, sit there for a little while, a few hours with no fan blowing. But for the most part, 10 days worth of um, fan blowing is what we got down into here. And even though the material definitely feels pretty damp, I've just got this feeling between aerating, you know, creating a lot of little air pockets in between all the material, and at the same time blending the drier material out on the surface in, it just seems like that combination could actually lead to some pretty smooth flowing stuff soon. And now it also kind of just, you know, makes me feel interested to see if in fact I could just use fan blowing into the bucket as a good way to help control moisture. In my bus bins it just seems like I don't have the material stacking up quite as deep as what I have here in these buckets and the depth I think is what shelters a lot of the lower material from the airflow that would allow its moisture level to remain in check a little bit. So you saw me really trying hard to reach down to the bottom. I kind of sensed a little clump of stuff or whatever this is here, some sort of chunk of paper or maybe it's a clump of shredded paper, a piece of cardboard. It does seem like whatever that is, it was probably not getting the attention it deserves because it probably was stuck to the side of the container, um, cutting off access to a portion of it that would otherwise see nice wormy traffic. I don't see other leftovers really. The material does seem like it's um, pretty far along, you know. We've been um, stingy, pretty much giving them no bedding over the past few feedings. The only thing they've received was small particle sized foods and um, I think I'm making it official. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stick with keeping the fan set up, blowing down into these buckets I'm going to apply the food we're giving them today, same as I did last time, which is to till up a little opening in the middle and then sprinkle the tiny particle size feeding material into the walls of the crater and then try to backfill. And it was after the last feeding, it seemed to me like allowing for a couple days before activating the fan was a nice little pause or delay because it allowed for warm traffic to nip off any newly added food materials that might have been near the surface and um, look at a little bit of mold starting to grow on this coffee this coffee's been sitting around here for a while in this box I reached capacity and then and then I started tapping the box on the counter to help it settle and compact down into the container making room for even more so it's um not only full but it's kind of compacted down into the hole too <laughs> so you know something we often add to my application of coffee is worm chow but rather than worm chow i've also got this uh another dry food item which is a little bit of old breadcrumbs very similar to my worm chow but just bread and I think that's going to make for a, a nice feeding. And I think I'm going to follow suit with what to me seems like it worked pretty well from the last time was to just go a couple days and let this food that we just gave them, which is kind of near the surface, get consumed before we turn on the uh, fan to help dry the stuff out here on the surface. And, um, and then, you know, now we're only... 12 days away from these systems reaching 300 days of age so perhaps we'll just time things out if possible to return to these systems for their next check-in when they've reached their 300th day in service you know in a way I am kind of glad that we're not putting the material over into bus boxes there's just something about 
having a different different type of container one that you're not used to working in it just um i don't know just makes you sort of think different in terms of how to approach what you're doing and uh i guess just based on the different configuration of the container it's definitely resulting in a slightly different worm farming experience so i think from those points of view it's interesting has a little variety stuff down low is popular because the stuff on the surface is pretty dry when i when i do multiple systems that are all sort of brother bins or sister bins or um, twin bins or systems that are the same age being configured and managed the same way over their lifetimes like we've got with these two buckets by the time we get to the second system i'm kind of in a mindset of wow i wonder what we're going to find here but instead i'm more of a mindset of you know i assume we're going to have very similar conditions to what we observed in the other system and if there isn't then that inconsistency itself in itself would warrant a little bit of you know curiosity it's funny down here too i'm also bumping into uncomposted materials it looks like leafy matter i see like leaf stems and stuff what we're what we did right there was something i've been really wanting to do and i thought it would also be something that would um kind of happen automatically by us emptying these into bus bins would be the opportunity to get the stuff that's really down low i mean at the very bottom up against the plastic out off that surface and into circulation because it's getting neglected by being in a spot where it sees worm traffic but kind of passerby worm traffic it's not just out in the material in general and getting you know intercepted by worm traffic from all directions all the time it's sort of in a sheltered place where it's not gonna see as much action as it could perhaps these more in-depth thorough mixings are, are going to help a little bit too you know bringing all the drier things that we encountered off the surface down low um helping to certain you know helping to bring up certain things that are have been just sitting down there at the bottom of the system for who knows how long maybe from day one because of the um you know limited access so let's follow suit i was kind of hoping to perhaps do away with more of this stuff than what we managed to feed down here and i'm wondering if it just has something to do with the way the stuff is kind of jammed in here and doesn't want to free flow but i also don't want to tip the scales one way or the other just want to try to maintain consistency in terms of how much food gets fed to each system and i think that these dry foods are also going to help absorb some of the uh, moisture from the surrounding materials Perhaps not so much the coffee because the coffee probably still has a, even might even still have a tiny minute amount of um, residual moisture content to it. But the breadcrumbs are definitely dry and they're going to suck up moisture. So um, I think that's it. Well, you know, I'm definitely curious to hear what the viewers think in terms of my decision making, my thought process. I try to do it out loud here so people can kind of play along. But in the end, it is just me making my next decision on what to do and well in this case i think sticking with the yellow buckets is a good way to go well hopefully you agree let me know if you do that brings us to the end of this video and well hopefully you had as much fun as i did this was a pretty cool check-in i was always very curious about what was going on at the very lower end of these systems and uh, I think we just proved that there's still a good amount of work, a little bit of material left for these little guys to, you know, chew on down there. And, you know, for another few days, I think we're going to continue with the fan drying and we'll see how that goes. I'm still liking the idea of um, sacrificing a little bit of shelf space to get the uh, material out into bigger trays where we can see what's going on, really pick through it more carefully. And, you know, by giving it more surface area and exposure to the air, possibly seeing it dry a little bit more quickly but i don't know whatever we'll play it by ear so that's it for the video everyone hopefully you enjoyed it uh, if you did as always please 
don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.